continues. In the meantime, there's other news. Watch. So we're paying a price based on the price that other nations are paying. That's what we're going to pay. No longer seven times more, no longer 10 times, 11 times, even 12 times more. I've seen examples we're paying the same price. We're talking about billions and billions of savings to people. President Trump yesterday proposing major changes to the way Medicare pays for prescription drugs. The plan involves setting an international pricing index that would bring the amount Americans pay more in line with the costs in other countries. We're joined now by our headliner, Alex Azar, Secretary of the Department of Health and Human Services. Mr. Secretary, thank you for your time this morning. We all want to know more. What can you tell us about this this morning? You bet. So yesterday we released a report showing that in the one of the very important parts of our Medicare program for seniors, we pay 180 percent of what Europeans and Japanese pay for their drugs because pharma is giving them big discounts and we're paying sticker price here. The president came here to HHS and he announced a new program where we're going to get the benefit of those discounts that the pharma companies are given to other countries, bring those savings to the American consumer, the American taxpayer, and our senior citizens. It's novel. I hope it works for you. But how do you drive down prices when other countries are gouging us? Well, what we do is we're going to calculate an average of what other very wealthy countries are getting by way of discounts from pharma. And then we're going to, over the next five years, scale down our payments for those drugs down to get at least a 30 percent reduction in cost. That's $17 billion of savings for Medicare over the next five years and $3.4 billion out-of-pocket savings for seniors from this one initiative on reducing drug prices. Why has this been such a... It's seems to be a very personal effort on the part of, of President Trump. Why, why is he uh, going at this with the uh, uh, amount of energy and focus as he has been and is? Well, I can tell you, you, you pick up on that just right. He is deeply and personally committed around this issue of drug prices. Uh, he and I interact constantly on it, and he challenges me and pushes me to deliver results here. Um, he just hears from the American people, and he hears that they're paying too much. You know, We've got drugs in this Medicare program where we're paying 500% what a European is paying for. And that means that for a senior citizen, when their doctor charges them for that drug, they're paying five times what a European would pay for the exact same medicine. But, but it's just what not you, fair. What you're trying to do is put pressure on the pharmaceutical companies, too, right? Because if you can drive up competition, you can bring the prices down. That's the well, idea. Yep. The first thing we want to do is deliver savings for our, our seniors. But if it causes the pharmaceutical companies to challenge the Europeans and Japanese to pay them more for their drugs, well, so be it. Right now what happens is they get all their money here in the United States, they go abroad, these drug companies, and they get whatever they can get in those countries, and they view it as gravy. The gravy train is over. Well, bring it on, huh? I mean, you, you, you think American companies will beat their prices then? Uh, we're going to do. We're going to get our prices down to what they're willing to negotiate. This is free market. Listen, right now, this is a government program, and because it's a government program, we end up setting a price. The price we set is the sticker price plus a six percent add-on. So we're setting a price. We're just really stupid at setting the price. We're now going to work to use what they negotiate abroad and other systems to pull our prices down. You know, th this obviously is something the president has called revolutionary. As far as what people can expect to see, I mean, how do you paint the picture as to what the outcome of all this is going to look like for the American consumer? So what this is going to mean is that by the end of next year, early 2020, when it's implemented, people will start seeing real savings when they get infusion products or any type of physician-administered drug under the Medicare program in the 50 percent of the country where this demonstration project is going to be initiated. But they're already seeing savings from the work the president is doing. Historic levels of generic drug approval. We've introduced competition into the Medicare Advantage program to bring savings there. We're already seeing that in this year's open enrollment period. We've brought the gag clause statute forward that the president signed to prevent insurance companies from telling pharmacists that they can not inform you as a patient that you can get your drug cheaper just by paying cash. That's all very so, important stuff. And generics are a big part of this. Two specific questions. You've got a midterm election in 11 days, and you know Medicare for All is a topic, especially on the left. Why do you think Medicare for All is a pipe dream? 
Well, I don't want to talk about the election, obviously, but on the policy merits of the so-called Medicare for All, what we need to remember is Medicare for All ends up being Medicare for none. This takes a program that's a guarantee our, to our senior citizens and throws other people into it. Now, what happens is it makes doctors get paid at the Medicare rates. That's about 40% below what the competitive market provides for. These doctors will leave the system. The hospitals will leave the system. You see that in other countries that have socialized single-payer systems, and you will reduce care. Seniors will lose care. In addition, the 170 million of us who have employer insurance, under many of these plans, that goes away. That's outlawed. You have to go on a government single-payer system. Now, last question from me. Do you believe in covering Americans for pre-existing conditions? Absolutely, and the president has made it absolutely clear that he will not permit any repeal and replace of Obamacare that doesn't have an effective vehicle for ensuring that people with pre-existing conditions have access to affordable health insurance. Final question, Mr. Secretary. Um, this is to quote the report and how it concludes on the changes to the, to the prescription pricing. Medicare could achieve significant savings if prices in the U.S. were similar to those of other large market-based economies. Can you quantify anything for us today? You bet. We're going to drive 30% reduction in spending in this part of the Medicare program from this demonstration at the end of five years. That's $17 billion over five years and over $50 billion over 10 years. That's a significant cut to what Americans are spending on drugs. Got it. Alex Azar, thank you so much, Mr. Secretary, for your time today. Let's see how it thank goes, you. and I hope you come back very soon. Thank you. Thank you. Meanwhile,